Okay, Mr. Mahdi, you can continue. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, okay, we will spoke about uh, standard equipment, just equipment, equipment for our events. Now, uh, I prefer to talk about the rules of arbiter and duties of arbiter before I start uh, the laws of chess because lots of chess would take a long time, maybe uh, for tomorrow, uh, because very long, need two days, I think. But let's try today, just speak about the rules of arbiter and duties. Uh, as you know, the rule of the arbiters and their duties, the arbiters are the link between the organizer and the players of the tournament. As I said, always must be one hour before arbiter being the venue, uh, especially in first round to check all equipment, everything before start first round. For other rounds, half an hour is finished enough because uh, already you set up everything and already the players, they know the, their places, they know the, the procedure, they know the rules for that. Uh, Easy for uh, next day, just come only the open the clocks, chess clock and uh, provide score sheet and other. See, half an hour is enough uh, to do it. So, arbiter has not only the uh, supervise the game, ensuring the laws of chess are followed, but also to ensure the best condition for the player who should not be disturbed and will be able to play without any difficulties. So this is our job to not be any difficulty for the uh, player and to provide for player very good atmosphere to play the game. Therefore, we have to take care of the playing area, the equipment, environment, and whole playing venue. In addition, we must always remain aware of the potential for the cheating. The general duty of the arbiter in competition are described in the article laws of chess 12, article 12. So this is important. Also, we see, we check players before they enter the uh, venue. Uh, depend of the type and level of the event, uh, the, the organizer provides secret, uh, secret, uh, security or the something like metal detector uh, or super scanner to check each one, all players who enter the tournament hall. So you have to check before enter if they are carrying some um, metals, something, some other device, maybe wearing something is not allowed by arbiter. So you can check before enter the game because this all devices, electronic devices not allowed to enter in the venue. And even uh, any small thing, as you know, uh, now is technology and very smart a small devices, very small thing you cannot see. It can keep the player in the air, can put in the, his heart, can put in the pocket anywhere. So this is job of arbiter of our secret uh, security of the organizer to check before enter the tournament uh, uh, venue. Uh, also to see the laws of chess are observed. And the arbiter has to be sure, uh, ensure the fair play and must follow the anti-cheating regulation and uh, to check uh, and inspect the toilet before start the game, even go to the toilet and cabins and check if there is nothing inside. Because sometimes what happened, a player is coming very early and they go to the cabinet to uh, toilet and keep maybe some device, iPod, iPad, something inside. Uh, maybe using when they go to the toilet and uh, use uh, the analyze game and take information from this device. So we have to be uh, to ensure fair play and must follow the anti-cheating regulation. This means that we also must take care to prevent any cheating by the players. So cheating can be in the venue, can be outside the venue and uh, uh, can get information from the uh, from the uh, from neighbor, from colleague, from friend, from parent, from spectator, from uh, coach, from anybody can uh, get information. This uh, arbiter has be very care about this all things, and to act in the best interest of the competition, 
to ensure that a good playing environment is maintained and that the player are not disturbed to supervise the progress of the competition. So this is all duty of the arbiter. Also to observe the game, especially when the player are in short time, when they're in the time travel. So he has to be very close to the players table and watch the game. Uh, maybe during the uh, time travel, maybe you can see the a touch move or illegal move or pre for reputation uh, for players and we will speak about uh, the reputation also and the laws of chess so in this case we have to be very close to the uh, player and to order to do all this the arbiter shall have the necessary competence sound judgment and absolute objectivity so uh, he has to know about uh, perfect of the laws of chess so he can take his decision according to articles and laws of chess. If there is no article cover the case, so in this case, he can take his decision and this decision can be 50-50%, can be 50 correct, 50% wrong decision. But he has to take a decision. Don't leave the case, don't continue. You have to take decision. If you didn't find any, uh, any article or laws cover the, this case. The number of arbiter required in the competition virus depending on the kind of event. So kind of event, if there is individual event or team event. So here we can see how many arbiters we need, depending on type of event and level of event, level of a player. So we have round robin, Swiss system, knockout system, matches, and so on. So on the number of participants depend on importance to event then we can recognize how many arbiters we need for, for this type of the event. Uh, normally, we have in any event chief arbiter and one deputy chief arbiter. Then we have uh, some assistant arbiter or much arbiter. Uh, approximately one for every 20 to 25 players. This is the Swiss system. So 20 to 25 which means 10 to 12 uh, tables. So each arbiter can give to uh, observe this, uh, these games. Uh, and it will appoint it by the chief arbiter from beginning. And uh, if there is big event, a big venue, and we have many players, so the venue can be divided by two sections. And in each section must be uh, uh, chief, deputy chief arbiter. For, and uh, must be a sector arbiter. We can call sector arbiter for uh, uh, section one and section uh, two of uh, section A or section B, sector arbiter. Under the sector, uh, sector arbiter must be assistant arbiter or, not, or arbiter or much arbiter. So sector arbiter, he divides arbiter according to the number of players. For example, if we have each section, uh, section 100, of 100 players, so uh, 100 players just mean we need uh, five arbiters. Each 20 players, one arbiter. So each section we have five arbiter and uh, plus one sector arbiter. Then we have chief arbiter and deputy chief arbiter. So like this, if we have round robin tournament, round robin tournament uh, number players, very small number, 10 players. So in this case, one arbiter, enough so we have chief arbiter can be one deputy chief arbiter <coughs> or one <coughs> or one assistant arbiter but sometimes we we use uh, more than assistant in case the tie break so if there is the tie breaks so if they reach tie breaks uh, uh, for example in a blitz tie break in the blitz so uh, you know if uh, three uh, minutes plus two seconds a player is playing very uh, uh, very fast players are playing very fast or in this case, uh, we, we need to uh, uh, ask for two assistants, especially uh, for high level tournament, uh, such as the World Cup Championship in the Sochi last time, uh, when, was, when they reached to the uh, uh, tie break, uh, blitz tie break, they used two assistant arbiter, one right white color, uh, one right for black color. So we have two assistant arbiter plus one arbiter was supervised. So three arbiters for one match was because it's high level of tournament. Um, to behave 
in a proper manner with the players, captains, and spectators, and the uh, respectful and dignified by the arbiters shall take care to manage any dispute during the game. So even arbiter in this case have to observe the many games. So sometimes uh, I am care, uh, I have 20, 10 tables, but uh, we have three, three tables in time travel. Okay, I cannot manage myself. I cannot divide myself to three tables. How I can watch three tables same time? All tables or three in time travel. In this case, I can ask for my colleagues, ask uh, uh, from chief arbiter or ask from, from uh, sector arbiter. Okay, can you uh, help me with other arbiter come to assist me? Because in this case, we can help each other because we are working as one team. All arbiters uh, working as a one team. If you finish your section, you can go to other section. You can go to your neighbor arbiter. Other sections and okay, do you need help from me? I am ready to help, to assist. Just ask before you leave the venue. Said, okay, I already cover my 10 tables and finish my games. Okay, I submit or score sheet and I can, I can leave and go outside. No, don't go outside. You have to take permission from your sector arbiter who's in charge or from chief arbiter or deputy chief arbiter. Hello, I finished all my game. Shall I leave or you need me to help? So you have to wait, don't go out. So arbiter have to take care of the games that they are responsible for the observe and to check the game's progress. So this is especially when we time travel. It is not acceptable for the arbiter to leave the planning, playing area every 10 or 15 minutes. This has happened. I, I saw from my experience many, many events and big events, arbiter always going to drink tea. Every 10, 15 minutes, leave sometimes take 20 minutes, go outside, go smoking or drinking, go talking to other. This is not arbiter. This cannot call this the arbiter. So cannot be. So you have to be in the venue. If you want to go outside, just call your assistant, go call your neighbor, call your ar other arbiter, please. Uh, just I go for five, six minutes to have a drink or go to the toilet and come back. Please cover my place. It must be work like this. We are as a one team. So don't leave without even permission from your uh, boss, from your deputy chief arbiter or sector arbiter or chief arbiter. So even you have to take uh, permission. Uh, so a spectator, official, or any other person not leave the, you, even when we give, we are, when, when we said not allowed to enter any devices to the tournament hall for the spectators or, or team captain or other, other people. So same thing for the arbiter. Arbiter cannot sit in the chair cannot use the mobile phone, talking to the mobile phone, cannot uh, uh, you, uh, take newspaper, reading newspaper, books, others. So this is, cannot say this is the arbiter. Uh, this, is not, this is not your job. You come here, you have work, you have duty. They will pay you, organizer will pay you money. So you have to work. So uh, it is not acceptable for the arbiter to stay seated in their chair, reading newspaper or book even chess book, nor side front of the computer, serving the internet, other things. So he cannot do, cannot do, this is not his job. And it is uh, also not acceptable for the arbiter to speak on their mobile and, and speak with uh, his uh, colleagues, speak with the other person, maybe uh, one VIP or one person or, or one head delegate, or one spectator came to tournament hall, Okay, I, okay, this is my friend. I will go to say hello. And he spent all time, maybe more than 15 minutes, speaking with the guy. He left the, his area. He don't know what happened uh, behind uh, the, the games. The laws of chess regarding mobile phone are valid not only for the players, even for, for the arbiters. So even arbiters is not allowed to enter in the tournament hall with mobile phone because he has a job to do. So uh, the biggest problems during the game are used because of the absence or the lack of the atten attention to the arbiter. 
So Arpita is always, always upset, always go outside, drink, go to the toilet, speak with the friends. So this is very, cannot, and uh, those the ignorance uh, of the what actually happened in the case of the incidents, maybe some incidents, some, some table of problem, there's a claiming for something, so he looks around the arbiter, arbiter not there. So, okay, what shall he do? How is the, who is an absent arbiter able to make fair decision? If you absent, you cannot go for fair decision. Maybe one opponent, uh, okay, one, one of the player go to the toilet, for example, or leave his a chair, and other one maybe touch pieces, and maybe got uh, spoke with them, some uh, one friend or got information from expect, spectator or anybody. Uh, very easy can get information because arbiter is absent, no absent, no arbiter there. So this is the, another problem. Uh, okay, we face other problem because if the arbiter not there, maybe players he touched the pieces. And uh, when the opponent forced him to play the piece, which is touch, he said, no, I didn't uh, touch. I didn't say, I, I said, I didn't touch. Or other said, no, I said to you, Jadu, or I said to you, I adjust. So in this case, according to the laws of chess, is allowed to adjust pieces. Because I said, I said, Jadu, I can fix my pieces or other. But if arbiter not there, okay, can can place a liar? No, I said he didn't say what he said. I said, so always must be an arbiter there. For that we said, arbiter job, especially in rated or event or or, or title event, uh, there is time control, time sheet control, time sheet control. Every thirty minutes, have to go around arbiter and take. Uh, information about the match. For example, he's in, in charge of the five matches. So he, every 30 minutes go to check first table or first match who is in charge and write down the, the number of moves for white and black and time which they reach in this time. Then go to the next table, third table, fourth table, fifth table and so on. Then after three, Minutes again, repeat, go same thing until finish the game. So he has a score. He has a score, and he always walking around very close to the player. So no chance, no chance to any player go and cheat and and, and get information from others because always arbiter there is not absent. So he must be observed, always can supervise by the player. So in this case, we said, if there is something case need to take decision, some cases not covered by the laws of chess or nothing special or article to cover this case. So he can take his judgment. He can take his decision, making correct decision and 50% of making must can be right, can be wrong. So he has to take decision. So don't, Say, okay, continue after a while, I will see, I will tell you the decision. No, take immediately decision. But, and, and uh, before you take decision also, uh, be careful. Uh, don't be uh, rush to take a decision because sometimes if you immediately take decision, maybe you take a wrong decision, but even you can, uh, take consulting for your uh, your colleagues from the chief arbiter or deputy chief arbiter of sector arbiter. Okay, sector arbiter, please uh, see in this uh, situation, uh, which is laws is not covered. Um, in my opinion, this uh, need to uh, uh, give penalty for the white and uh, add uh, or reduce uh, minutes from him. Do you agree with me? He said, yes, I am agree. So if he's agree, so you, both of you agree, you can take the decision. If the other said, no, it cannot give in this position. Uh, he's not guilty, he's a right. So in this case, you can say, okay, no. So at the end, the decision 50-50 can be correct, can be wrong because we don't have uh, any article of laws of chess to cover this case, but we have to take decision. 
Of course, arbiters are human beings and we may make mistakes, but we have to try as much as we can to avoid such as problem. So to show responsibility in the exciting their duties. So the correct time for arriving in the playing hall, as I told you, must be one hour for first round. Uh, before start of the round and following the chief arbiter instruction are permitted because chief arbiter must must give uh, instruction uh, instruction for the the player for arbiters whose arbiter will be in section one whose arbiter will be in section two who will be sector arbiter who will be sector in section one or two and how procedures work this is must be early before start the round for that we have to be early there to show team spirit and cooperate uh, in the best way with the other arbiter of the competition. An arbiter job in the competition is mainly teamwork. So we are work as one team. Uh, we cover each other. I am not here, you can cover my place. You are not here, okay, other colleagues cover your place. But don't leave tournament hall without announce, without call, without inform your college or other arbiter. So arbiter are uh, empowered, empowered to take their own decision on the game they observe. So always we have to observe the game. When we are, we are, when we are close and observe the game, it's easy to take decision because it happened in front of our eyes, so very easy to take decision. But however, we have to ask the consultation with the chief arbiter of sector arbiter or deputy arbiter in any situation where they do not feel ready to take an important decision. Uh, also to study the regulation and be up to date, must be update because sometimes the uh, laws of chess uh, is changed. Uh, for example, one arbiter, in, is, uh, we are in two, 2021, maybe arbiter has book, uh, manual book, arbiter's book for 2014 or 16. Okay, in this case, 14 or 16, already we have some uh, articles already changed. For that, he using the old system, the old, so for, he will go the wrong decision because it's not updated. He has to be updated of any changes of the laws of chess. And as you know, the laws of chess every four years update. Every four years is update laws of chess. Arbiter have to know the laws of chess and the regulation of the tournament as they have to take decision immediately when needed. So don't delay your decision. You have to take immediately. The players cannot wait for a long time and game has to be continued without undue delay. So don't delay, then you don't delay your, your decision. Okay, take, as I said, if then nothing cover, and laws of chess, your decision can be 50% right, can be 50% wrong, but no, nobody will blame you because you have to take decision in this case because nothing covered. To have excellent knowledge of the handling the electronic clocks, also I have to be know how to set up, how to install the clock. If I said, uh, or arbiter, okay, you have 10 tables, 10 matches, please go, and set up uh, time control according to uh, a tournament regulation. Okay, you will check the tournament regulation said time control 90 minutes plus uh, 30 second increment from move one. Or we can say uh, 90 minutes for 40 moves, then 30 minutes to end the game plus 30 second increment from move one. So in this case, has to be knowledge how to fix the time, how to install the time, the clock. He does, if he doesn't know, so don't be shame. Go to the chief arbiter, deputy chief arbiter, any colleagues, tell them, please, can you uh, teach me how to fix the clock? Don't do by yourself, you not knowledge, or maybe you fix wrongly. This happened in one game, one, one, one event. It was time to control, it was uh, uh, three minutes plus two seconds. It was this tournament. Arbiter by mistake, they and instead to make three minutes, make three hours. They make three hours. How many? They play 
three hours. Okay, this is what was mistake of Arbita. So uh, they recognize after a while, after 10, 10 or 15 minutes, they seeing that the, the players' um, time is not go down, always increasing. But then they discover it was by hour, not by, by minutes. So this is okay. You'll be sure you install the correct uh, time control. If you don't know how to fix, you go to other who knows. Uh, it is not acceptable for the arbiter to leave the player in wait, players waiting for the long time. So while trying to fix electronic clocks, which show the wrong time during the game. So here, here, this is, you have to fix. Don't uh, be sure you are fixing. For that, we need to be early there to check everything, especially the clock. Uh, then we need to follow the dress code. The dress code is very important for the arbiter, same as a player. We know talking about the arbiter. Arbiter must be well dressed. Uh, cannot come with the slippers. Cannot come with the hat. Cannot come with the t-shirt with a very bad picture, bad word. And uh, uh, this is not allowed because we we have to give example and good behavior for the other, for the players, for the our. Our college for that we have to wear very nice dress, uh, especially at the high level tournament in the Olympiad or World Championship. We have to be suit uh, uh, if, if, uh, if uh, normal normal game or normal event like local uh, like uh, national events. Okay, you can wear your traditional event, uh, traditional uh, clothes, traditional dress. It's, it's okay, no problem. But don't come. The sleeper don't come with t-shirt and shirt and uh, the arbiter of the competition uh, shall be dressed properly, helping to improve the image of the chess as a as a sport. And uh, we have three duties of arbiter also before start the game, and during the game and after the game. What is this duty? An arbiter should arrive. At, as I said before, playing her at least 30 minutes before the schedule start the round. This means uh, after round one. In round one, always come one hour before, okay? Uh, for the first round of the tournament, it is advisable to arrive at least one hour. This is as I told you before. And uh, in very important event, the chief arbiter may ask for the presence of the arbiter even earlier than those times. I remember in uh, the Chess World Cup, uh, last World Cup in Sochi, the chief arbiter was uh, Laurent from France. He's a chairman of uh, Arbiter Commission chairman. Uh, so he asked us, okay, the event was uh, at 3 p.m., but always we move. 12:30 uh, from uh, hotel, so we reach venue at uh, quarter to 1 p.m. So more than two hours we are in the tournament hall because he asked. He, he need to be very early there. Even uh, each one has only four or five tables, but okay, this is a decision of chief arbiter, and we have to follow him. And uh, the whole playing venue, like playing hall toilets, smoking area, analyze room and bar, and the technical condition, light, ventilation, air condition, enough space over the player. Must be enough space and very easy to walk between this all area. And uh, even the chief arbiter announced which place is allowed for arbiter for the players to go and even for the uh, arbiter to use. Sometimes it's an arbiter, you have to, you can use the tournament hall, uh, not uh, analyze, you can go to the analyze room, but not go to the, such as other room. So he will mention for arbiter, same as a player. So he, he not allowed to play, go to analyze room. He's al al allowed to go for the restroom, smoking area, and, and so on. He can go to the bar, which is inside the venue or next to the venue. And the technical condition also same must be checked carefully <coughs> before the arrival of players or spectators. This is important, kind of the fair play we have to check. 
uh, checks also the equipment. We have to check chessboard pieces. Is it the standard or not? A score sheet and uh, score sheet. Uh, also, we have provide two type of score sheet. For example, one score sheet from number one, move one to move 60. And second one uh, from move 61 until move 120. So must be two score sheets there. Maybe some players, they already played more than 60 move. So he needs the second score sheet. Don't give him the uh, repeating score sheet, same one from one to 60. No, you have to give a second score sheet, which from 61 until 120. Toilet, chairs, robes of the playing area, name plates and other must be ready. So some players come with the plates with his name and table number has to be there. Table number one, two, three, four, like this. And if there is the uh, electronic chess board must be checked with the technical IT. If the, the board is uh, board proper, proper or not and check uh, pieces because the inside the piece uh, and the bottom down, there's sensor piece. When you move each piece on the electronic board, wooden board, they show the, the move, uh, the screen. So you have to check for that always a, a technical or IT person, uh, one hour before they can check all boards, if all pieces is recognized or not by, by computer. Uh, the correct uh, setting of the time control condition of batteries and other, this has to be checked. So this is all duty of the, the arbiter before start the game. This is all before the start the game, before the start the round. Uh, for team competition, is it very important that before the start of the uh, game, team composition, the team composition have to know who, who's playing board one, who's playing board two, three, four, uh, like this. So he has to check also uh, the order and confirm the order. Then we have during the game, when the game start, when the chief arbiter said, okay, now starting time, start. Then he press the clock, work for the white. And here, our duty to check if the old clocks is working and all players is re recording the, the move in the score sheet. So here, our job. So even we check if all players arrive or not arrive, and inform the chief arbiter. Some players is not arrive, and uh, even defend, depend on the uh, tolerance. If there is zero tolerance, once he said the start, he will lose the game because zero tolerance. If the delay time, for example, 30 minutes delay time, so when once we say a start, you have to wait until 30 minutes end, then the uh, arbiter can forfeit a player who was uh, as absent, and send the report to the, or inform the chief arbiter or deep chief arbiter. Okay, we have board one or board three, the absent, so they give forfeit. And when you give forfeit, can be minus plus or plus minus. Don't give one zero zero one. So if the white was uh, absent, give minus plus. This means black one. If uh, black was uh, uh, absent, give plus minus, meaning white plus one by forfeit and minus for the block. Uh, regularly, check the electronic clocks by the using the time control sheet. As I said, every 30 minutes, you can go and check the score sheet and the number of moves written. Discrete control of the players, not if, if leaving the playing area for the unusual number of times, sometimes, we see in the players every two minutes leaving the at, uh, tournament hall. Every two minutes, go to toilet. Something wrong. Cannot be. Not allowed. Okay, we go ask player what what's wrong with you. Maybe he said, okay, I am diabetes. I have problem. I have sugar. I have. Uh, I have to go uh, every two or three minutes. Go to the toilet according to my sickness. I say, okay. Can you provide the report of doctor, something doctor, notice from doctor? That's uh, confirm you are sick. Then in this case, okay, we allowed. But if nothing there, just you said, okay, I want to go because I died. So in this case, this will be kind of cheating. Maybe go to the toilet, analyze, and get help from others. So we have also be care about this, this thing. Uh, 
So normal time or normal number of players to leave the tournament, you can say that every half an hour can be one time. So if you have time control with uh, maximum four hours, so you can uh, six or eight times maximum. So every half an hour can go, no problem. But if every two minutes, every five minutes is unusual, cannot be. Uh, observe all the games, especially when there is time travel with the help of an instance assistant if needed. So if I have three, four, five tables in the time travel, so I will ask for assistant, other arbiter to help me. <clears throat> so the general duty of the arbiter also carefully check claims by the players. So if you very close the, to the to the table, to the you observing the game, it's a very easy to decision because you are close and one of the claim you can take your decision. Okay, together with the chief arbiter, sometimes if I am not sure about decision, you can go to the chief arbiter if needed before take any decision. At the end of the game, when the game is finished, check the record result by both player and check if the score sheet have been signed by both players. So I remember on the old, old laws of chess, um, many arbiters, once the player finished the game, he asked player who won, he said white win. Immediately go in the score sheet and write one white win one zero. Okay, he didn't he didn't ask other opponent, maybe opponent win, not his win. Okay, he right. This is not your job, arbiter. You don't go for record and result. This is job of players. Just ask arbiter players when they finish, please uh, write down the result and sign. Once they write down the result of the score, the score sheet and sign it, now you come to confirm. You job to confirm the result of score sheet. Not write the score before player. This is not your job. This is a big mistake. This is blunder. Cannot do. And update the result sheet by recording the result of every finished game. If you find the game is finished, but in the score sheet and white score sheet show 40 moves and black score sheet show uh, 35 moves. So five moves is missing. So here, uh, ask uh, or force the black to uh, record the remaining moves until reach 40 moves, then uh, then it can leave. If you said, you said no, I cannot do, but here it can give penalty. And even if I won, he can make loose because he against laws of chase against the FIDA regulation. So he has to follow the regulation. Uh, and one of the type of regulation is to fail uh, his score is in the score sheet for that move. So now we have after the end of the round, what shall arbiter do? To check for the result, he has to check the result, all the games, then, uh, the result sheet or the game protocol also has to be checked and give to the chief arbiter or deputy chief arbiter or sector arbiter who's in charge, then you have to give to them. Then even before the leave, he has to ask them if they need you for assist. Arrangement of all chess boards. So we go to arrange the old chess board, the 10 pieces back. Uh, close, uh, switch off the chess clock and uh, bring the new score sheet for the next round with the pin and uh, everything when it's set up, equipment, check equipment, everything is okay. So they will make ready for next day. Pieces, score sheet, pens, clocks, and so on. The chief arbiter responsible for the full control of the competition and for the correct application of laws of chess and the tournament regulation. He shall take care of all technical matters and ensure the best condition for the players. So he has to manage the available arbiters and assign their duty and responsibility. So uh, from beginning, when I come to the tournament hall, I have 10 arbiters, okay. I give each arbiter the duty 
uh, okay, you're responsible in section one, you have 10 table, you're responsible in section two, you have eight uh, matches, and you two are responsible for fair play, and your job to be inside and outside the venue to check all players, spectate on other, uh, according to fair play, nothing they use to inform the players. Uh, he is responsible for the smooth running of the competition, and he may have the responsibility of taking the final decision. Uh, for example, uh, subject of the appeal, if there's an appeal against a uh, player, uh, against the decision of uh, uh, arbiter or chief arbiter, so he has, uh, according to the regulation, tournament regulation, they have period to submit uh, and written uh, uh, claim uh, with the feed uh, give to the chief organizer or chief arbiter of uh, chairman of appeals committee uh, to discuss about the case, discuss about this claim. He has to try to settle all raising uh, disputes uh, before they are forwarded to the appeals committee. So we'll check if the claim, claim is correct, okay, can go to the appeals. If we see the written claim, but no fees, didn't submit the fees, protest key fees, so I uh, can not consider, I said, okay, sorry, not accept. So he has a time, for example, in the regulation we mentioned, if the, if the uh, normal uh, time control, if the standard chase, they sometimes said, okay, you have until one hour after the uh, end of the round, you can go for appeal and uh, again, it's uh, decision of arbitrage. Of in the, if the time control is the blitz or rapid, they said, okay, within 10 minutes after round finish, you have go for appeals. If 10 minutes finish, then you cannot go for appeals. And appeals to be complete, you have to uh, submit, uh, uh, pay or transfer money to, to the organizer uh, attached with the appeals. Now, only in his uh, absence, let's uh, do the responsibility go to the deputy chief arbiter. Sometimes uh, chief arbiter, he leave the tournament hall. He said, I will go outside, maybe have a drink or maybe go to the toilet somewhere else. In this case, uh, he give his uh, all full responsibility to the his deputy chief arbiter. So according to FIDA uh, regulation, must be always one player, one arbiter in the tournament hall. Chief arbiter of deputy chief arbiter. Cannot be both of them outside that tournament hall. Uh, and you post his report to the organizing body. So after the finish the tournament, uh, after he collect all results from the arbiters, then the chief arbiter will check everything with the deputy chief arbiter. Then he will go to the, the pairing, the in charge uh, arbiter of making pairing and uh, enter the result for uh, be ready for next uh, round, pairing for next round. And once the tournament finishes, uh, ended after last round, the chief arbiter has to write his report and uh, send uh, his report to the organizer body and uh, copy to the Continental Federation if there's under the Continental Federation or to the FIDA if there's the official FIDA event. And if it is national federation, give copy to the national federation in which he is included. The list of the participants must be there, pairing, results, final standing, the list of the arbiters, including their uh, evaluation and must be evaluation of the arbiter. And uh, this must be after end of round, chief arbiter must evaluate if arbiter, how was during the tournament, some may be good from 10, seven, some got eight, some got five. So depend of the observe and uh, supervising the arbiter, he will take his uh, report, uh, evaluation about the arbiter. So consider the arbiter is always available in the, in the venue and always he's coming early or late. So this is all considered. A report about any incidents that happened during the game. Maybe uh, we cut, we caught some player uh, he cheating during the game. So even we have to write the report about uh, uh, this player. Everything else important for the future organization of the event, we have to write in the report, even 
if we have uh, faced, for example, during the game, uh, lighting problem, it was a little dark, we have to mention the report, or, or maybe uh, uh, the organizer, local organizer didn't provide, uh, for example, uh, drinks, uh, water, warm, cold drinks, for that can write down, said, uh, please next time provide, because we have some professional player and so on. So uh, this is all about uh, the role and duty of uh, the arbiters. And we finish this part. And uh, if you need a break, or if you need any question before start the uh, FIDA laws of chess. So uh, then we give you another 10, 10 minutes break. Then we can continue and go for our subject, which is uh, FIDA laws of chess. Any question, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mahdi. Uh, so guys, any questions regarding the last lecture, the second lecture, before going to the third one? Okay, shall we give 10 minutes break? Yeah, uh, yeah just a, a few seconds for maybe someone maybe wants to ask a question. Please, anyone who wants to ask a question, raise your hand first, please, and then I will give you the opportunity. There is an option for raising hands, by the way. Okay, uh, Mr. Muhammad Siddiqui from Pakistan, please, uh, you can ask. Uh, yeah, I actually, I have not uh, uh, prepared a report uh, uh, because uh, it was always done by a chief arbiter. Uh, actually, I wanted to know about the format uh, uh, and uh, how the list of the participants is prepared. Uh, it is done through some software. We have to provide a link or uh, it is uh, prepared in a Word format or Excel format, uh, or there is a standard format for it to submit to the uh, FIDE. Uh, can you please uh, throw some light over this? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, everything Mr. now. Madi? Yes, Mr. Madi, Sorry, uh, can you repeat his question for them to be clear? Uh, so then you can. Uh... No, I, I, I understand. I understand his question. No, no, for some people, maybe they need to. Uh, they need a repetition of the question. Okay, okay. Can repeat please. it. Okay. Who will repeat? You or him? Uh, no, I mean uh, you can. You can do that. Okay. See. Okay. Okay. This is part of my answer. Uh, the, the the standard things. A uh, chief arbiter. He he write the report. Okay. I am because you are now. National arbiter. Just in case you became one time chief arbiter, even you you can be chief arbiter. Even you are national arbiter. Even some even allowed to be your chief arbiter or deputy chief arbiter. Even you don't carry that title. Not necessary to have a FIDA arbiter or international arbiter to be chief arbiter. Chief arbiter can be even national arbiter, but for the local events and rated event, not the title events. And uh, okay, um, the, the the procedure is. When you use the, the Swiss manager uh, type of the, the pairing system, the Swiss manager itself, they make the report. After you finish, the, the list of participants will be appear for you. You print out the list of uh, 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 participants and even list of the arbiters. So uh, who, who knows to, how to use the Swiss manager and he will enter all details of players from beginning before start the tournament. So all federation, national federation, or if the if the event by local uh, federation, okay, uh, from the clubs, from players individually, they send the list. Okay, I want to join up. Uh, I want to participate in the uh, national event. So chief arbiter uh, take all the list, enter the data to the. Uh, Swiss manager program, uh, the important to have the correct FIDA ID. Because sometimes some player have two or three FIDA ID. So which one the correct? So you have to be care which FIDA ID is correct. We always we go for the which has high rating because some player has high rating and low rating. They go participate with the low rating. If they find himself in the tournament, he scored very well. 
and his ELO rating will be increased. They said, okay, sorry, this is my wrong uh, ELO, wrong uh, feed ID. My uh, right feed ID, this one with the right uh, rating. If you see the, 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 the competition, he lost the game, he will lose the rating. He said, okay, this is the, my correct. So this is, cannot be. Only you have a unique one, one, one feed ID. So this is job of the chief arbiter to discover, to find which feed ID is using the player. So you have to enter all these details to the Swiss manager after finish the tournament. There is some option to provide you certificate of the organizer, certificate of arbiters, as calling as a norm arbiter, and list of players who participate with inside this IT3, IT3 the report of the tournament. Inside this report, you can add your notice. For example, at okay, this player was caught, he was cheating in round three, the name of player and feed the ID. So inside you have to write. Uh, okay, this player after after round five they withdraw uh, from the event. So this is all notice you have to write down. Okay, I know your national arbiter is not your job at the moment, but you will be one day you do same thing. Uh, this is easy way. So list can be by this, and your report will be from Swiss manager. Beside you can write a report in the world documents and world document world. I can uh, and world also can uh, can write uh, something like small SC about the tournament. I want to start from date until this date under uh, supervision of the arbiters or not, and organized by Indian Chess Federation, for example, or Pakistan Chess Federation. Number of participants 120, and there are uh, more than 20 title holders, and from uh, 20 federation, for example, and, and so on. And this is the report, and this is the standing and ranking after in the uh, tournament. One, two, three, four, who got the gold medal, with the servant, if the prize money also, the mention of the prize money for each winner, and so on. So this whole report you can write in the world document and send or give to the organizer, to your federation, national federation, copy. If the club organized, can give to the your club, copy, and copy go to the federation. And federation, they will send to the feeder. Don't you, not allow you as a national arbiter to send report to the feeder. Only you submit and send to the local federation, national federation, their job to send. But if you are chief arbiter and the world championship on official feeder event, this is you, you have to send direct to the feeder. This is the difference. Is it clear my answer? Yeah. Cannot hear you, I cannot hear you. Okay, you can speak Mr. Muhammad Sadiqi. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. No, it's, it's, yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, you raised the point that uh, sometimes people have more than two IDs or it should have been unique one, uh, single one, single ID. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, sometimes you have two account, two IDs or three IDs. Is it legal yes. to have or yeah. two or three IDs? Why do FIDE give them uh, two IDs or three IDs? FIDE. Uh, so and, they have, uh, yeah. And second it's question it. is, uh, if my club yeah, uh, arranges, arranges a tournament, uh, in absence of uh, federation, like FIDE sometimes provides with a reverse delegate, then uh, uh, I have to submit this report uh, to the reverse delegate who would submit on my behalf to FIDE if a club tournament is arranged, or sometimes if uh, a federated uh, uh, event is arranged, uh, what would be the course of submitting the report? Okay, so there, thank you for your question. Thank you. First of all, uh, so there, um, any federation, they have rating officer. His job to register the tournament and his job to submit the report to the feeder. This, this is the rating officer for each country authorized by the feeder. They give username and password. You can go to the feeder system online and register any tournament before a start one month. 
after finish the tournament within one week, he has to submit the report. This is rating officer job, not arbiter job, which I, I, I spoke about level, high level official FIDA uh, event, official FIDA event like uh, uh, world championship, continental, other, this is official. The official chief arbiter has to submit to FIDA direct, but other kind of the event, international event and so on, this is must be via local federation or national federation and via rating officer inside the federation, not you as arbiter. Look, the, this is job of, uh, okay. Your second question, why we have two or three FIDA ID? This is problem or mistake of, of uh, rating officer. What happened? I will, I will tell you, this happened even for us, especially for Arab countries, because you know, we have many names with Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ahmad, Muhammad, Muhammad Ahmad, Muhammad, many names. So the maybe you come to my event, you participate in Dubai. Uh, I told you what is your name? He said your name Muhammad Ahmad. Okay, Muhammad Ahmad, which FIDA ID you carrying? You give me one FIDA ID, but actually you have two or three more, not one FIDA ID. What's wrong? The wrong is the rating officer in your country register you twice or three times. One with Muhammad Ahmad, first name Muhammad Ahmad, Muhammad as a name, um, Ahmad father name. Other, other, other uh, time you participate with the event, he register you Ahmad Muhammad. So give you two ID, two different ID, but you are same person. This was the mistake from the from the uh, FIDA rating officer inside the National Federation. So FIDA announced on the website and they send the, the, the message or email to all National Federation, please concatenate, concatenate and see which one the right person. All, all other things, they said, okay, please send three IDs or two IDs for the player. We will make unique because sometimes maybe you play in one event with other ID, you have a rating. Maybe you play five rated player and play other next event with another ID. You maybe played with four rated player. Here he will join together four plus five. We make under unique number for the ID. So we have only carry for the ID for that. Always you have to check if you have more than two, Inform rating officer in your country, please make me make me unique number and calculate that calculation because you have rating different in the different feed ID. For this is always saying feed are not allowed, but the problem with the rating officer. This is the problem. And uh, or sometimes players will be cheater. They they know he they knows he has he has a FIDA ID, but they will go to the, to the other event. He said, oh, I don't have FIDA ID. Though now the rating officer will create the new, because to create new FIDA ID is very easy within, within one minute only. Just they need your passport copy, and first name, family name, and uh, nickname, and date of birth and federation. Just enter immediately within one minute, you will create for you FIDA ID. So they will give you FIDA ID, new FIDA ID, but you already you have one. So in this case happened this problem, you know, the problem cases from the, uh, from the FIDA uh, FIDA Federation rating officer, from the Federation rating officer, this has happened. We found many, 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 but already we solved this problem. And now all we have unique. So I think many federations have same problem, but now they solve it. Maybe few federations still not solve this because the uh, uh, rating officer maybe is not uh, that knowledgeable about the how to fix this problem. Okay, anything else? Uh, okay, guys, I think uh, we can take a break of 10 minutes to start uh, our third lecture tonight. Thank you, thank you very much.